Welcome to the Proto Art. Be sure to like and subscribe for new content. <coughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Proto Art. So, I wanted to break down how I did this digital art piece. I don't normally do digital art, it's not the medium that I started off with or am super comfortable with. Honestly, it's something I wanted to kind of challenge myself to do now that I have time with all this going on. And uh, there wasn't any one particular like tutorial I watched. It was really just trial and error. That's just always kind of been how I've learned a majority of like the various things, uh, kinds of art I do from like wood carving to painting to whatever, traditional art mainly, uh, music, all that. It's just kind of trial and error and learning what works and what doesn't work. So I kind of checked out some of the people on like Instagram and YouTube and some were kind of... Um, kind of cool with giving you their techniques and how they apply different layers and effects where some are really secretive <laughs> which has always been kind of funny to me i've always liked teaching um so i've never really wanted to like hold back on knowledge if i can help another artist i'm going to so i kind of wanted to take time from this and explain at least how i did this um again i'm no pro at digital art uh this is just me kind of learning as i go but i thought it turned out really good um consider all things considered you know like i said I, I don't do digital art the closest thing i do is like i've done photo retouching for portraits and a little bit of digital like compositing but nothing like dedicated just to art like this but anyway with all that being said um i wanted to show you how i got to this point so i started off with an image from a toy i actually found online of hulk and thor from thor ragnarok and it's a highly detailed toy, uh, these little figurines. I don't know how large they are. There's no detail details with the image I saw, but um, it had enough detailed information as far as like shadow and highlights and color values that I can use it as a good reference. So that's what I did. So I ended up tracing, uh, tracing this image and just using it as a, you know, outline. Uh, with that, I also sampled different colors from the, uh, the toy itself and made like a little color swatch. So I just used my eyedropper, I sampled a layer, I would go into the color itself, the, the color picker, and with the little third option here, the little B selected, you can drag the slider up or down to create like brighter or darker, to darker tones. So that's what I did. And I just kept going back and forth between my different colors that I created in my swatches and uh, layered it up. So I took all the colors that I found here and made uh, just a flat color palette from it. So I applied like just the flat colors, like the overall colors I saw in just a particular section. So you can see the cape kind of had a lot more variety going uh, with it. So I kind of changed that uh, around quite a bit. Same thing with uh, his little leather like uh, shorts. <laughs> So I just would sample a color and paint in a little bit, sample a color, paint in a little bit. I wasn't trying to blend on this layer, I just wanted to lay down a base coat. Same thing with like if I'm doing a traditional painting, I'm laying down just the base coat just to kind of get everything going. I wish I could have recorded this in real time, but honestly this took me like 30 plus hours to do. So I was, uh, wasn't able to record everything in real time. I did get bits and pieces of me working on this. I'll try to incorporate that in this video. A little later on but I kind of want to break down this process here so with that being said I took took the uh, basic colors made the flat colors uh, I had to end up going back and adding a lot more shadow and stuff going on but uh, just the starting point I added some highlights and shadows using the sample the uh, color eyedropper sorry <laughs> and creating like the highlights and shadows uh, using the toy as a reference let me hide the line work here and came out okay you know just to give me a good reference i took a lot of time with the face i'm still not 100 percent satisfied with it honestly um and took the same approach with the armor here's the flat color and here's the detail so there's quite a bit going on with this and i'll include all the brushes that i use uh really like i said you could use any any kind of brush that you want it's just i uh, found using a smooth brush uh one that was kind of grungy um those like my pr primary ones i used on this uh, drawing here zoom in a bit and with the grungy kind of brush i found various ones online 
I found that like using them either making them very large or very small I can kind of create different effects so I used the same thing where, where I would sample a color and I just made it extremely bright and with a quick like brushing over the image I kind of created this really cool like beat up looking armor effect going on there because I figured you know Hulk's been in battle so armor is going to be a little beat up and warped but with that same idea in mind I also used it to kind of create some texture so I used a sample of the skin tone made it darker and brighter and I was able to kind of use both of those tones and almost create like uh, pores on the face and it kind of helped to sell like the realism of the image a lot more um and I'm kind of bouncing around here it's just a lot to kind of cover um I used another brush I found on this really cool channel called Flarn so I had that brush still saved from quite some time ago and ended up using that quite a bit in this Hulk piece so Hulk's you know he's still a man he's a large green guy but he's still a guy uh and he's a hairy dude at that so I added some hair around his face chin and on his chest so with the hairbrush it's a really cool tool if you ever need to add like you know fill in some hair in the face or um really it's it's just a very flexible tool you, depending on how large or small you make the brush it could be like really fine coarse hair or like really long i use that also to create his eyebrows i was having a really difficult time trying to find a brush that created this then i remember, remembered i had that from some time ago uh the teeth Added a lot more shade, uh, shadow and shading. So, <clears throat> with working on the face, I had to keep in mind like he does have armor on. So with the armor on his face, it's going to create and cast shadows, um, and it felt way too bright, and it kind of helped sell it. Same way you would do like color matching and blending if you're doing like compositing. Same idea with this. You have to remember there's a person inside this armor, so the armor is creating shadows and you have a cast shadow, you have your, you know, your not so dark shadow, but the darkest shadow would be like on the left. It's like, the, it's kind of hard to explain. The darkest part of his face would be on the left side. So I wanted to kind of sell that by adding a darker shadow. And also you can use that to kind of shape the face. Um, they call it contouring, when, especially when it comes to like makeup. Add highlights down the center and the, by the cheekbones and they blend it out to make it look softer. You do the same thing for like photo retouching. But I took the idea of contouring a face with highlights and shadow to kind of create more of a three, uh, 3D kind of realism. So like you can kind of see his nose looks a little bit more round there and uh, you wouldn't see the inside of the mouth as much because it's in shadow. I also added a blue tone to his skin a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit, because it felt a little too bright, and uh, your skin has various tones. You have like you know, all kinds of colors going on there, so I wanted to kind of add a little bit of variety to it. It's just to taste. You know, you don't necessarily need to have that. He had a tattoo on his chest in Thor Ragnarok, so I ended up kind of tracing that uh, same tattoo. Um, the easiest way, honestly, let me hide all these layers is if you had an image like this and you just want the white there's tons of like tutorials on how to do this but i just ended up using this select color range and with that eyedropper you can choose what color you want so i selected the white notice it grabbed all this other detail and information from the image so you can adjust your fuzziness slider it'll either allow more of that color or less you can also use this little plus or minus dropper. So you want to add more detail, you want to include that and a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And it'll keep changing uh, what it's selecting. <clears throat> and I use that, cancel that, to select all the white from the image there. And after I had that done and everything selected, I kind of fine tuned the selection using the little adjustment option there um, and painted in the white. So I lowered the opacity, I think I also made it uh, a hard light blending mode and lowered it down to like 50 something percent just to kind of allow you to be able to see details that are below it. Because I had the opacity low, you can still see the hair, but you can, you can adjust it quite a bit depending on how you layer your images. It's another big part of this. So let me zoom out again, added highlights, and I'll get to the armor in a, in a bit here. 
So the highlights, I kind of took the same approach. Uh, instead of just using a soft brush, I used a little grungy brush. Go back to my selection here. Yes, it's a clothing texture brush that I ended up using, but really you can use any kind of grunge brush. And I use that and you can either sample the, the tone of whatever is around it and increase the brightness or just choose white and have like a very low flow and opacity and kind of lightly brush. But I just kind of had to keep in mind of what the lighting direction was for this image coming from the top right. And just kind of went along the whole image and kind of did my best uh, to kind of guess how it would affect uh, Hulk's body as well as Thor's and stuff. And added, uh, duplicated that layer, changed the blending mode, made it a little bit more brighter. Uh, let's see here, skin texture. Let's see, it's quite dark there. Toggle that on and off. So again, depending on how you layer it, it's really gonna affect your overall image. So with that same thinking of how I use the grunge brush, I did, did the same thing for the skin texture. Okay, so yeah, sample the skin color, got my dropper, dragged it way up high. I'm not gonna do it right now, just as an example. And with the grunge brush, I ended up painting uh, dark and light to kind of create a uh, tone, but because I had my highlights on top, I wanted my let me explain this a little better. I wanted my shadows to kind of create a actual like poor texture. And if you notice your skin, if you have any light shining, you can see the individual like pores and stuff. So just playing around with different layers, I found that having the shadow layer with the, the skin texture above my highlights really sold it a lot better than the other way around. So I'll stick with the hand here for a second. So can see it almost makes like it looks like pores just because of how I have it layered so lastly I added shadow and I kept adjusting this as I went along so it didn't look this dark initially as you can see obviously but uh, playing around with it and adding my little lighting effects I realized at the end it needs to be a lot darker I knew Overall, this highlighted cloud would be the last stage, so it's gonna create a lot more light, so I know, I knew it needed to be uh, a lot darker in my uh, shadows. So the armor, this took, oh man, so much of my time. I'm not, it's crazy. So I spent at least three hours on a helmet, bounced around from that to the hand. It just, it took so much time trying to get this to look uh, you know, as good as I could. Uh, so realize you're gonna invest a good amount of time to make this look good. So I made a, a lot of changes. I tried to do this like uh, real time and record it, but it's so laggy. I, I had to record this earlier, but I'll, sh I'll show that later in the video to kind of create this like a uh, little tone going on here. So going back to the toy, I realized, you know, it's like a metal strap kind of bending around. So I had to like really try my best to mimic that. Yeah, I was hoping I could do this in real time, but my system was so laggy as I've kind of did a, a review on my Huey on tablet. And I don't know if it's the combination of that and, my, and the screen flow program, but it becomes so laggy, uh, it's nearly impossible to use. But I tried my best to record this, uh, but you can see I'm just sampling layers, uh, making darker tones. Um, I kind of zoom out here and there to kind of make sure I'm still um, being cohesive with the rest of the image uh, as far as the lighting and the uh, overall kind of grittiness that I applied to some of the other armor. So I kind of bounced back between the lights and darks, um, just sampling and trying to make it look as even as I can. Uh, I thought it came out okay, uh, with all things considered, and you can kind of get a feel for the amount of time that it can take just to kind of make something that seems so easy, you know, look realistic and stuff. So uh, hopefully this kind of helps you get a feel for the actual process of creating this kind of uh, art. So keep in mind where all your layers are and label them correctly because if you need to make a change You're gonna spend a good amount of time trying to find it and it's such a pain in the butt so Toggle that back on Moving right along added more highlights and shadows same thing no special technique to it It's just sampling the layer making it dark making it bright and painting away with a soft brush with a very low flow and to kind of help blend everything together using that same textured brush. And I think I used, uh, again, sampling the color, making it darker, and I think I also used solid black. 
just kind of lightly painted over different parts to kind of create this like warm uh, texture to it like it looks like it's been used and it's not fresh and I just like the grungy look it gave me and I use that kind of throughout the whole image to kind of blend it all together um, let me zoom out again adding my shadow so you can tell it's quite a bit of shadow but that was like my last stage but the face was so much darker and I knew my light source was going to uh, cast a hard shadow on the body so I knew different parts had to be in quite a bit more shade so because I had it separate, uh, separate the armor and the and the skin on their own layers, I was able to kind of play around with them independently without you know being uh, having destructive editing. So I added my shadow to my armor, and then seeing okay, it looks a lot darker, but now the skin doesn't match. I had to go to, go back to my skin layer and add more shadow there to kind of help blend it all together. So we're almost done here. I think I added a little bit more shadow and detail. Going back to the face again. Once again, like I said, this isn't completed to me. Like I would still probably spend another day or two just trying to fine tune little things on here. Uh, if, if this was like a paid commission or something, but um, being that this is my first attempt at digital art really, and I'm just doing this so you guys can kind of see, I think I'll call this thing done. Uh, the last little piece I wanted to use to bind all this together again was uh, more shadow. At this point, there's so much shadow and highlights. <laughs> and added these little dust particles in the background, which you probably wouldn't even see, honestly, unless you're like really zoomed in. And I added the little glow. I know this wasn't in the actual movie, <clears throat> but I just thought it looked visually it looked cool to have like these little dust particles and um, this glow around his bat or whatever that's supposed to be, like a club or something. And added this little cloud plume of smoke here. It's a cloud brush, and I use that to kind of paint the uh, atmosphere around it. And you know, kind of considering, all right, that's my light source, so it's going to affect the rest of this. But again really looks detailed and it it is but it's not hard to do it's just time consuming so if you are trying to create something like this be prepared to spend at least 20 or 30 hours in it like and that's coming and these are like uh, that i've been told from people who've been doing this for years so like you expect if it's your first time you're gonna spend a good amount of time trying to get this looking right if I, if i were to just try to like paint this as is I mean I could get away with um, let's see undo this sample the skin make it brighter you could get away essentially with painting softly like this to make your highlights and you could also do the same with your shadows you know sampling the darker part Dragging that down and kind of shaping your image like that, which would look fine. You know, it's, just, it's your own taste, it's your own you know technique. But I wanted it to kind of like sell it better, so that's why I went with this grungy brush, which gave me the same colors but made like little holes in it, so and almost made it look like light was shining through. So let me get a white color here. Make that larger. See how it's kind of like a like little specks. I just use that in various ways to create highlights. And uh, if you have it really small, it almost looks like skin pores. So you know, it's like fine grain, like a grainy looking brush. That's essentially all that I did to kind of create this image using you know, oops, hair brushes or a hairbrush, a smooth brush, and like a grungy brush and just use it all over the place. Just sample, 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 sample. Taking a complex form, breaking it into a simple shape. Uh, in this case, breaking it into different sections. So focus on just the face, just the hand, just the chest, and then you can take it to just the head piece, just the armor on the arm, just the, you know, his little club or whatever. Instead of trying to approach everything at once, because you're probably going to get overwhelmed if you're just starting with digital art like this. 
anyway guys um hopefully you enjoyed i will like i said put a link to everything i used in the description below and i will try to talk, i will talk to you guys soon so be sure to like and subscribe and uh be safe out there <laughs>